All right, everyone, and welcome to our second Top Coach Academy. I am here with many, many coaches, many that are still dialing in. Uh, we have a very special coach that we're highlighting today that we can to hear from. Um, I'll be your host. My name is Arno Nakaya, Senior Director of Sales for the Central Region. I'm here joined by, by my regional manager, Jeff Cromenhook, and a lot of coaches from all over the United States and the Central Region. So this is something that we will do every two weeks. We look forward to highlighting a ton of top coaches. Uh, it might be you here in the future. Um, but without any further ado, we're going to go ahead and kick it off and um, welcome our speaker for today. Um, I've gotten the chance to get to know her, her family, and her beautiful daughter, Wesley. Um, she's fresh off of vacation, so she's ready and excited to share a lot of her top tips. Um, this will be an interactive call where some of you that are dialed in will um, have a chance to ask questions. Um, her name is Nikki Whiting. She's our speaker today. Uh, she's a nine-star diamond coach from Louisville, Kentucky. Um, she is um, an executive leader. She's also in the top 14 um, out of over 350,000 coaches. So um, excited to get to hear from her. Um, she's been a coach a little over two years and um, has done some phenomenal things. And so without, without any further ado, why don't we have Nikki come on and Share with us, Nikki, how you got started. What's the story? What, uh, what, how did you get started and, and, and what brought you here? And then we'll dive in a little bit into the topic, which the topic today is social media. So, Nikki Whiting. Hey, morning. guys. Um, thank you guys for having me. I'm excited to talk and I don't have any notes, so I feel like I can just kind of just share the way I normally would. But um, as far as how I got started and my original why, um, which has changed a little bit along the way, and I think a lot of you guys will agree that they kind of change as your, your goals change and stuff, but um, I was a challenger, and I was one of those who bought off eBay and the ones that, you know, you're like, oh, I can't believe after all that work that she didn't go with me, but um, I... I was thankful enough and I was, uh, I had a coach who Stephanie Chico allowed me into her group, even though I hadn't done that. I hadn't bought through her and, um, I went through a six week program with her, loved it and went to, uh, my next challenge group with her and started insanity and really wanted to do Shakeology. But, um, I was one that said, you know, it was very expensive and, um, just wasn't sure. I decided to stay home. Um, my daughter at the time was five months old and I was a third grade teacher prior to coaching, um, in a private school. And we decided I was going to stay home with her. Um, I had a lot of fears and anxiety about leaving, um, her to go back to work. And so we were going to make it work. It was, it was a tight budget and, um, it was just, asking to use Shakeology during that time was just hard for me to even ask my husband. So she approached me about the coaching opportunity a couple times and I, uh, said, thank you, but I don't think that this is, you know, I don't know that I could do this and, uh, you're a great coach, but I just don't know that it's for me. Like, I don't know if I could be a great leader. So she, you know, said, of course, I think that you would be. And she was very good about just letting me go. And then um, the third time she asked me, okay, you're already posting the social media. Like, why are you not a coach? And at that point, I approached my husband about the opportunity to at least get a discount on Shakeology. And um, so that's kind of how it happened. He said, you know what, go for it. If you're going to go for it, you need to like dive in. You need to follow what your uplines are doing because he knew that, um, you know, I have Brandy Botts above her and Stephanie Chico. So we had a lot of really great um, upline leaders. And so that's what I did. And I really took off and, and um, my original why was just to help support the family in a way financially. Um, I knew that we would be fine, but at the same time, I just, I kind of missed that. Like I craved being able to contribute in that way and having the, the conversations with adults <laughs> every day. And, um, so that's how it started. And, and here we are. <laughs> so Nikki, that's absolutely phenomenal. And that's how most coaches start. Um, you know, it, it starts either as a hobby or, or you're in a challenge group where you actually have some great results. And 
crazy to think that you started as a challenger and now you're part of a test group with hammer and chisel. Uh, that's going to be coming up here, by the way, on demand in, a, in I think in 10 days, a couple of the workouts. So, so I've, I've got a question before we jump, jump kind of jump in into the social media topic. Lots of coaches either work full time or they've got kids, they're involved in their community. Um, and might or might not have a supportive spouse. And I think some of the people that are on here have coaches exactly like that. And so when you think about going all in, right, how do you define that to your coaches, right? Is, is it a matter of time? You know, what did you do? Obviously, you have, you know, they have zero excuse because you did it. Um, what does that look like for someone that has all these responsibilities? I mean, I definitely – feel like they need to have that big why you know they need to know exactly why they signed up to do this to begin with and keep that in the forefront even when there are you know the the struggles and trying to find the time and that sort of thing and i feel like time a lot of times is is something that comes up um, along with the spouse you know maybe not being supportive because a lot of what we do especially in the beginning is um, you know, we're working as if we have a six figure income, but we don't see that right away. And so we are putting all this work in and maybe our spouse, you know, doesn't see that or we start to feel like we don't see that. And that can be, you know, that can be um, kind of a, a setback for some people if they allow it to be and it becomes a fear. And so because of that fear, they really just never get started. And I can say from experience that my husband was not a complete supporter in the beginning. He said, you know, go for it after the third time. Um, but he didn't drink Shakeology for at least a year and he, you know, didn't want anything to do with at home workouts. And it was just, it was a process. And now he is 150% my biggest supporter. Um, he went to the success club trips and when he left the boat, the first one was the cruise and he was like, I want to be a coach. Like it makes everybody want to be a coach. I love this job. I love this company. So he really loves it now. And, you know, he knows like all of you guys too. So it's just cool. And um, I just tell them to, to stick with it and to really delegate your time, figure out what your priorities are, um, figure out where you can fit in the time. And there's so much you can get done in one hour if you really have it organized. But if you're, if you're sitting down and you're scrolling Facebook and you're not doing the things on your list, you can, I mean, an hour will pass like that and then you've done nothing. I think that's brilliant. And so I was just writing it down. So the summary is obviously a why you've got to, and it's got to be yours. It can't be your family's. It's got to, you know, kind of be the selfish why first and it might, you know, you know, go towards the family. Um, you've got to make uh, time. Time has got to be, and you've got to prioritize that time. Um, and then as far as family, best friends, you've got to lead by example. Uh, you can't convince them to want to work out or drink Shakeology, um, you know, or, or come on a trip. It's got to be you leading by example. So obviously you've been able to do that incredibly well, Nikki. Um, you know, would love for, to, for you to jump into how you did it, um, you know, staying at home, young kid, um, and mostly through social media. So why don't we walk through that and tell us that journey and kind of how you've grown. So I, I can kind of be, I guess, a little bit broad and you can steer me if you want. Um, so for me, I do like 99.99% of my business online because I am like in person, more of an introvert. It takes a while to get to know me. Like, I, I don't know. It just, it, I can, I'm funny and I love to joke around, but I get in front of someone I don't know and I just like, ugh, I freeze. So um, for me, I love social media because it's an outlet. Um, and I tell a lot of people, you know, there's a lot of people that come to me and say a new coach and they're like, well, you know, I don't, I don't get on social media or I don't get on Facebook and, um, I just don't really have time or whatever it is. And I let them know that I didn't have Facebook until September of 2012 when my daughter was born and, um, I decided I'd get on to share pictures of her. So my friends list was like 200, 250 people when I started coaching. It was a private account. Um, and so once I signed up to coach, I knew that I needed to be expanding my market if I wanted to always have a market and not run out of, you know, the, the warm market that we talk about. 
um, with our close friends and family and connections. So for me, um, I, I did everything my upline did and because I just knew what she was doing was working. And so that was adding two to three people to my network every single day. Um, I had one-on-one -on -one calls with my coaches today and there's so many who said, I just, I don't do that. And I'm, and I can't, it's the easiest step. Like why not just add a couple people to your network? Like click, click, click done. So that, um, and then, people ask me what I do with those people. Um, I don't actually reach out to them. I we're strangers. So I let them follow me. I let them get to know me on my personal page. I let them see how I am as a wife and a mom and friend. And, um, and then we kind of form a relationship through comments and likes and, and talking to each other on each other's pictures and that sort of thing. So that when I do post about a challenge group or post about the coaching opportunity, I have that many more people seeing it and I've kind of I've built a little bit of a relationship organically with them. So that's kind of how I go about that. Um, I tell my coaches all the time, they have to be consistent on, on social media. Um, you know, you, you can't, you can't go without posting and it's not just because I, I want them to post every day. It's because Facebook literally takes you out of the newsfeed if you're not consistent. And so you have to let your coaches know that because in the beginning they don't, they don't get Facebook that way. And if they're using Facebook as their form of communication, then they need to know the tricks and the trades there. So, um, I tell them 80% of what I post is personal and 20% of what I post is business. So if you scroll through my page, um, the majority of what you'll see is family, fashion, food. Um, I, I ask questions. I like to post questions and see what people say. I asked about my cheat meal that I get in two weeks and like 80 people love to tell you about their food that they want to eat. So everybody loves to give their opinions and stuff. Um, so that's a good one and an easy one to do. Um, I used to say, um, and that's, I think, you know, things change when I first started, it was like post three to five times a day. And I think that that could be a lot. Um, I try to post twice a day on Facebook. Um, Instagram is all pictures, so I feel more comfortable if I want to post more there, but I usually stick to about three posts there. And I do use a lot of the same posts on both. You know, people will ask, do you like cross post? And I do um, a lot of times. Um, my likes page is all fitness, so I have no problem over there talking all day about fitness and nutrition. Um, most of the time, that's all it is, unless I've had some fashion um, questions and, and messaging people. Um, I know that that is a huge fear of a lot of the new coaches. I just had them fill out a questionnaire to kind of give me some answers on some things. And one of the things they said was, I just feel weird starting conversations or reaching out to people. So I've just been waiting for them to come to me and it's not going to happen. And, um, I tell them all the time that that was the huge, the, probably one of the biggest things about my business that allowed me to take off as quickly as I did, because I, not to say I wasn't scared. I was very nervous, but I made a list of like a hundred people from my friends list that I felt like were going to be really great challengers and, um, reached out to them. And I just started conversations with them and um, started talking to them. And a lot of them had seen my stuff and naturally started to say, well, what are you doing now? And that kind of allows the conversation to open about fitness and nutrition. And, um, you know, people say, well, I don't want to offend anybody. And yeah, I get that too. I tell, I tell my new coaches, I put my daughter down at like eight she used to go to bed at eight not anymore, but, um, she would go to bed at eight and I would walk outside with a big glass of wine on the patio and like send these me send messages. I would send like five to 10 a day and, um, <laughs> like drink the wine and send the messages and close the computer because I was so nervous. And so I just started doing that and it was crazy. The more I did it, the more I felt comfortable and the more I saw, um, honestly, how many no's it takes to get a yes. And so I wasn't afraid of the no's anymore. Um, uh, I don't know. What else do you want me to talk about? <laughs> no, there's some really good stuff. So um, 
I'm, I'm writing down some takeaways. If you, if you guys have specific pointed questions, this is the time to start asking those questions. But it's interesting that, um, correct me if I'm wrong, did you say 80% business, 20% family or the other way? It's opposite. I do, I do 80% personal, 20% business. Okay, so why does that sound counterintuitive, right? And I'm putting myself as a new coach, right? Some of the questions I'm going to ask you are for new coaches, right? Um, well, because I'm starting my business, I should be excited. Yes. So obviously you need to share that you're a coach. That's one thing that maybe I didn't say. Um, you do need to share that you're a coach. And that's another thing that I try to tell my new coaches within the first two weeks. I want you to share um, either your transformation, your progress, or why you decided to become a coach. And that doesn't necessarily mean take the, the generic pictures and um, say, guys, I'm a beach body coach. Here's my website, follow there and order. You know, that's not what, that's not kind of the feel or the culture of our team. And so what I try to encourage them to do is to just share genuinely why they started and just tell it as a story and lay it out there and just be vulnerable and start it that way. And um, from there, people know. And so with even 20%, uh, of the post being fitness or business, they still see it. They're seeing it. And even in those personal, um, those personal posts, I will say we do a lot of soft call to actions. Um, meaning that, um, although I'm posting a picture of me and my daughter I, and I'm at Disney world and I'm talking about Disney world at the end, I'm talking about why I was able to go to Disney World and it was because I'm a coach. It's because I have the freedom. It's because I have the income to provide my family with trips that I never would have imagined. And um, so to kind of add those little tidbits in there are a great way of doing it for people who are reading the post, but just scrolling through, it doesn't look like something that's salesy because I know that's a huge fear of new coaches is like, there's all these people selling things and I don't want to be like that. And I tell them, go look at my page. Am I, you know, am I that way? And I'm not, and I, I try not to be. And so as long as they know what you're doing, they know that you're supporting them. I mean, obviously my likes page is all fitness and nutrition, so they're going to get it nonstop over there. But the personal page is the way for me to build the relationships. Awesome. Awesome. Very good. Um, so thank you for that. I think that, you know, as someone starting out, they're just always very you know, excited, obviously. And sometimes I think the best coaching is to hold them back and be more strategic on how they do it. Yeah. Um, so I've got um, uh, several, several questions. If you know, if you want to answer, you know, you want to answer as, as deep or as rapid fire as you want. That's great. Um, okay. First question is, as you got started, I think you kind of answered that, is as you got started, did you always post two times on your personal page even when you started out? Yeah, I was posting at least three times a day, actually. I was doing a morning, midday, and evening. Um, morning, I figured I could catch some people up getting ready before work. Uh, midday was lunch break. But those, the middle of the day for me is really not a great time um, to post. And then in the evening, um, I have a lot of people who share their, you know, journey and their progress. And it's a great post, but it's like Wednesday at like 11 a.m. And I'm just like, ah, you got it. I'm like, take it down. We got to do it again. Um, because timing is so big too. Like you have to make sure that your following is going to see it. And it, it can be discouraging if like, you know, you post this great post and then you don't get the response, but some of the time it can, it could just be because of your timing. Okay. Let's, let's, uh, dive into that. What's, what's the perfect times or time during the day? Is there such, such a thing or is there a window that you look at? I think that it, it, it depends on your market. So you need to figure out what your niche in your market is because if everybody that you um, market to are major, uh, majority stay-at-home moms, it may, not, it may be a great time to post in the middle of the day or at three when it's nap time, or whatever. Um, but if the majority are working, then you're going to want to do it when they have time to sit down. And a lot of times they don't have that time until after they've had dinner and they've uh, bathed their kids and got them in bed. So um, late posts really work really well for me. Um, if I have something that I'm announcing, a challenge group or 
um, my transformation or whatever it is, I try to do that um, anytime after six or seven. And a lot of times I announce challenge groups on a Sunday or Monday um, at night. And the reason for that is because uh, even coach, coach ads, because everybody on Sunday night is dreading work the next Monday. Uh, many of them are going to start fresh on Monday. And so it's a great opportunity to kind of get in their feed while they're thinking those things and, um, and post. Wow. Some really good stuff. Timing makes all the difference. Um, I've heard it said before also when you, um, you've got that chat option at the, bo you know, at the bottom right. If it hits about 10% of your total friends list, that's kind of a good gauge. So if you've got 5,500 are online, basically it tells you how many people. And I think based on that, you can also gauge that. So I love that, but you've got to know your market. Um, okay, so you've got some really, um, really good questions. You mentioned earlier that, you know, you have 100 conversations or you just tell your coaches to have those 100 conversations. Is there a go-to kind of conversation starter that you use or do you make it, you know, personal, customized to the person? Yeah, so I think that um, that has changed for me. I um, quickly realized when I was messaging people without starting a conversation that was personal first, that um, the response was lower, um, that it was just so random and impersonal and not me. Um, and so I did used to do that. I, I It was very impersonal and I would just say, hey, how are you? I have this this group and you should join me. <laughs> like, you know, I was a very new coach ish and, um, that kind of changed. And so, yeah, we do have scripts now. I, I try to share with my coaches, um, ways to start conversations. So, you know, for example, there may be someone who had a super cute, I love fashion. So someone that had a super cute purse or something and, um, I'll message them and say, Hey girl, like, love your outfit. Where did you get the purse? You got to tell me. And, um, it kind of starts a conversation there and I can at that point kind of navigate through the conversation. And a lot of times, like I said, it leads to what are you doing now? Or I really need to eat better or cause they know I'm so into fitness and nutrition. It always just kind of leads to that. Um, but you know, if I'm having a conversation with them and it doesn't lead to that, there are two two different things. If I feel like they would be open to it at that point, I do offer up a challenge group to them and say, Hey, you know, I've got thinking about you. And I think that you might be good for this. If not, I let the conversation actually drop off. And then a week later, go back to them and say, Hey, I have a group starting on whatever date. And I feel like your name popped up. Would you be interested in doing something like that with me? And at that point, I've already had the conversation before. And then, you know, this isn't so out of the blue. Awesome. Sounds like, you know, customization is, you know, all basically the way you do it to make sure yeah, that it is time consuming. So that's why I try to tell newer coaches, like, don't send, don't send 15 messages that are all different to someone because you're going to spend forever responding. So, you know, if you your time is limited, then three to five messages a day or something. Okay. That's some good, good nugget right there. Um, okay. Um, moving on. This is more of a technical question um, is how do you get people that you added to your personal page to your like page? Do you add them there? Um, what has, what have been the advantages technically? What, you know, how does that work for you? Um, so I tell people never to give up on your likes page. It is such a frustrating beast of its own. And so I know people get so, just over it sometimes. Um, I know for myself, I didn't schedule my posts on that first success club cruise. And then we did had, we had no service. And when I came back, it was like, like two people seeing it, it was crazy. And, um, so I always tell them to be consistent on the likes page. If nothing else, you need to always be posting there. Um, and it's two different audiences. So, um, I do not share things from the fitness page often over to the personal page because I feel like it gets seen more when the, it's not shared, but rather it's just taken and, and reposted over on the personal page. Um, one thing I will do, I mean, once a month I'll invite uh, people over to like the page. You can specifically invite certain people if you want to do that. 
Um, there are certain people that I don't care to have them see my likes page. So I wouldn't invite them if I didn't feel comfortable doing that. Um, but one thing I have done that worked really well is uh, doing a giveaway on my likes page to kind of build that audience. And um, it, it created a good organic reach that way. Um, and what I had them do, and it can be simple. I mean, uh, a Shakeology shaker cup with headbands or a cute, you know, whatever in there. It doesn't have to be like an expensive giveaway, a $10 target workout tank or something. And all I would say is, um, you know, I'm ready for a giveaway. If I get blank amount of likes, I'm going to do this giveaway. And here is how you participate. And I make them like it, share it and comment. And by doing that, I'm allowing it to be shared multiple times on people, other people's pages. Um, and then I go to my personal page and I say, Hey guys, I have this giveaway going over, going on over on my likes page, go check it out. And then I'll give them the link. And that allows anybody from the personal page to hop over. Um, switching that up if I'm on my likes page and people have been liking my posts I go to their profile and friend them on my personal page um, I don't say anything to them I know a lot of coaches do some of my coaches do that they'll say thanks for you know adding me or whatever and that's a good approach too um, but I just add them and then let them follow me on my personal page okay very good um I want to dig in a little bit more. We're doing kind of this ping pong back and forth. So um, I like ping pong. Hopefully you like it. Um, this one is once you get the conversation going, um, so you're sharing, you know, you're, you're having that conversation, um, then you share about the challenge. After that, kind of going back and forth, are there steps that you take in inviting or is it invite? To challenge group or is there something in the middle do you use scripts do you do you um, I, give it yeah, to I, I really try to transition it as quickly as possible over to asking them questions about themselves um, you know if they say I'm interested tell me more what's it cost whatever um, I like to say well every it's all different and what we really want to do and I say the groups themselves are free um, we just have to figure out what program works best for you so can you tell me about your goals um, you know do you want to gain muscle do you want to lose weight do you want to figure out a better plan with your nutrition Do you need to eat better that sort of thing and everybody loves to talk about themselves so it's easy to ask them questions and just listen and Usually in those responses, you can hear enough reasons why they need a challenge pack and doing the how challenge groups, um, the challenge group uh, workshop at Summit um, gave me, you know, a lot of reminders of what I did in the beginning as a coach and asking them those questions allows you to respond in a way that makes them feel like the challenge group and the challenge pack is the option they need. You know, if, if it's, they need to lose weight, they need cardio and they need nutrition, then max 30 with the 21 day fix containers. And here's why, and here's everything that you, you know, here's what this is going to do. The nutrition side of it and the containers is going to help you with your eating and your portions. And you can really just use what they've answered to give, um, advice on what program that they need. Okay. Very good. Um, so dive in a little bit more and, 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 and obviously you're learning more about them as you go. Um, so as you're, you know, you've got life happening around you, then you've got social media. Um, a question that I have is how do you separate it all, right? Is social media kind of attached to the hip? Um, or if it's not, what are some ways that you've been able to separate yourself and still kind of be present with family, with friends, yeah. or whatever? Well, you and Jeff have been amazing with um, reminding me that I need to put down the phone, put down the computer and be present. And I actually remember specifically being on a call with Jeff and I was on a trampoline with my daughter and I was just exhausted. I was like just spent and he was like, how are things? I'm like, oh, it's fine. And he was just like, you need to... I, I said, I don't know if I'm going to go to the, a baseball game. I think that's what it was because I had this call and he was like, go to the baseball game, like just go. And, um, 
So that was really kind of the step for me to like realize my business is not going to plummet if I am unplugged. I mean, I originally started this job working an hour a day and that was my power hour. And even sometimes it was like 15 minutes here and there to create the hour. So it was doable. And um, yes, I work more now, but I'm able to, I set aside certain hours and then I put my phone down. I put the computer down. Um, my coaches know from the time I get on a getting started right call with them, the, the team page is the best spot for you for questions because yes, I will answer you in an inbox, but I am not going to sit down while my daughter is at my house and, and go through my inbox. So those only get tackled at certain times of the day. Um, and so you just set those expectations and then people kind of know what to expect and when to expect you to be there. So let me piggyback off of that. Um, the other question is, um, how many hours currently are you working your business, right? If you were to quantify it, how many hours? And then on top of that is how, um, do you have an assistant? Do you have a nanny? Do you have someone else helping you with your business? Yeah, so yes to both. Um, I have none, and I was quickly drowning in um, just little things that I knew I could delegate to people. And so I had to like remind myself, okay, how can I put up, divide my time really well? And so um, what I did was um, my brother-in-law actually, who is home from playing baseball for the winter. He's watching our daughter um, and he watches her three hours a day, three days a week. So it's not a lot of time. It's 10 to one and it's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Um, and those are the busiest days for me anyway. It's kind of when I set up everything so that when rank advancement days and all payday comes on Thursday, I don't feel like I have much that I need to do other than give shout outs and um, then we can enjoy the weekend. And so those are kind of my hours there. Um, I do work right when I get up in the morning for about 30 minutes. And then I work during nap time, um, which she takes one nap still a day. I hope that continues for a little bit. And um, a little bit at night. But I did, and I will say I used to always work at night after she went to bed, um, probably like an hour to two hours. But um, that was one thing that I told my husband that I was going to, I was going to cut back on now that um, I'm kind of like where I am and feel like I can do that. I can pull back a little bit. So um, I just spend that time during the day when I have the sitter and then I, I don't get, you know, I, I separate that time at night. Um, as far as an assistant, I, I started five months ago. I got an assistant. She was someone who was a coach of mine. And I knew she had potential to be a rock star coach. And um, I saw her as a, a future diamond. She's now a diamond coach. Um, and I'm sure she's going to be too busy for me soon, but she's amazing. And um, she works about seven to nine hours a week. Um, she helps me with the little things because, again, it was like, okay, what am I willing to give up? And it was hard for me because I'm like, want to control it all. And it's such a so it's like evil. So she helps me with shout outs, like success club shout outs, team volume shout outs. Um, he will help me check in with challenge groups because I think you guys know, especially if you've been a coach for a while, those can get a little like monotonous. Um, so she really helps me with those um, just little things, you know, that I can give up control of and let her do. Um, so regarding how you're spending your time. Yeah. So you've talked about what you do personally. Um, do you have, do you set aside time where you work with your coaches? And if so, how much time is that? So I've recently shifted from, we have our team page, obviously with tons of information. I still post in there and stuff, but you know, there's about 2000 people in there. And so it just gets to be a lot for people. So um, I, I've tried to bring it back to my PS coaches and I've done that by creating a page just for them. Um, I have a page just for my personally sponsored diamonds as well. 
Um, and I've put a lot of focus into that this year because I know that gr their growth is, is going to be the team growth. So I need to really focus on them. So I post a lot more, um, there, more information, more scripts. I also post, um, calls I'll do once a month. I do in this, like some people do them all the time and um, so I may sound like a bad coach, but I do once a month a Zoom with my PS coaches. Um, and then every three weeks, so once a month, I do one-on-one -on -one calls. And um, they are draining, but they are so rewarding. So, um, and as far as time goes with that, I would rather cram it into a few days rather than feel like my time is taken with calls for a week. So at this, today is one of my days. Um, and so I've literally been on 20 minute power calls from like, I did it from 10 to two. And then, um, I do it again from six to eight and I do that yesterday and today. And that really, um, I don't get on the phone with them unless they filled out a questionnaire for me. Um, the questionnaire asks a lot of things, you know, are you getting your personal development in? Are you um, starting conversations with three to five people a day? All the basics that we've been talking about. Um, and that gives us something to talk about and go from there. And I can give them my suggestions and feedback without it being um, a, a call where, because sometimes it can get, if there's no direction, it can get to a place where it's the same people always wanting to get on the phone and then they're just complaining versus doing anything productive. So it's, you know, I let them know your time is valuable. So is mine. And like, here's how it goes. And I assume your questionnaire is always the same. Yeah. I mean, I'll switch it every once in a while, but it's, it's normally the same. Um, I use Wufu or Google forms to create that. and. Um, makes it easy. What are some of the questions that you ask if you don't mind sharing? Yeah, um, I actually can pull it up if, if you want. I don't know if I don't. Awesome. Yeah. So pull it up and I'll talk, you know, until you pull it up. I think the principle that you're sharing is a critical one. Uh, it's a simple one, but a critical one, which is, you know, you move, I move, right? If, 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 you know, if coaching is a game of chess, if I move my piece, you need to move yours. If I move my piece, you don't move yours. The game is stuck. And many times I see coaches reaching over to their coach and trying to move their piece. And you can't do that, right? It's, it's business suicide, literally. And it's a lot of hours that you're spending with people that are not necessarily giving it back to you in energy. So I yeah. love that you're, you've got that and that you're also, um, it's almost like you're, um, you know, you're, you're sorting them out to find out their commitment. Serious. Yeah. It quickly lets me see like who really wanted to get on a call versus who talks it, you know? And so, um, I have the, I pulled up the form. There's like 20 questions, but I also includes like your name and email, that sort of thing. Um, I always ask the why and if it's changed, um, what programs, this was a recent one. This was actually new and it was, um, have you not gotten started with your business, but you want to? And, and so uh, I, at that point was like, okay, let's fill this out and see why your business hasn't started. And um, do you create conversations with three to five people a day? If not, why? Um, have you ever shared your progress or transformation pictures on social media? What day and what time did you do that? Um, now, this is a form that uh, we got. It was a five-star and above group that we've been talking and trying to figure out, like, Good, good ways to get our coaches revived. And um, so I kind of took it and then made it my own. Um, but just things like, do you run a challenge group every single month? Why or why not? Um, what is your brand? Five things that make you different. Um, all of those things kind of allow me to see really quickly, okay, well, Yes, you want to be enrolled in a month, but you're not running a challenge group. You haven't posted about coaching. You aren't inviting. And so here's how that won't happen unless you change this. This is good. This is really, really good. And I think that this will help anybody that is watching this. You can go back to it. Make sure you re-listen to this because there's been so many great things. Um, I've got a couple other questions and we'll close it up. But do you have one time where you can go back to and say, this is the time when I made a decision and I went all in and this is what changed. Is it, 
as you became, you know, from challenger to coach? Is it when, you know, Boomer, your husband came with you at a, at a trip? What, what was it for you? Um, I think it was a few months in when I was starting to make consistent income and I saw in my sights replacing my teacher salary, which was not a lot. I worked in a private school, but um, I saw that it was doable and, um, and going Emerald because that kind of, at that point I felt like, Oh, I can do this. Like that's, you know, I'm, feel, I felt more legit. <laughs> so, um, doing that. And then, yeah, just seeing that in my sights, it was like, okay, this is something that's like uh, the real deal. And from that, I just, you know, blinders on and just took off from there, just trying to do as, you know, whatever I could to, to grow my business. I love that. And, it, and obviously you started attracting more people. If there is a trajectory or if you're to put it on a X and Y axis, I, I would tell you when, you know, you were full in those next three months, your activity and your belief and your posture was so much more than it was before. Probably exploited your organization. You've developed, um, I believe a five-star diamond. There's another one coming up. Um, you've developed some leadership, five-star diamonds. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah, multiple star diamonds. We've got really great coaches. I mean, they're amazing. So awesome. Um, so blessed by them for sure. Well, you've done, um, you've done incredibly well. Um, this has been a whole pact of information. Um, and so we appreciate you, but before we go, there is these elite three questions that we ask all the speakers. And so, um, these are the elite three. And so we're going to ask you, and at the end, if there's something you want to share above and beyond all the rich information you've shared, please share. Um, but the first question is, um, related to fitness. Um, what is your number one this secret oh my gosh hammer and chisel is amazing um and i can't wait for you guys to see the sneak peek of that but uh i don't i don't know i think honestly and i my eyes were kind of open being in this test group is being always being a challenger yourself um i cannot tell you like how much i feel like my business and everything is affected when i'm not walking the walk myself with the fitness and the nutrition. So really just never stop being a challenger. Um, and, and that's, that's it. I mean, I feel like when I'm doing that and I'm focused on that, I'm able to focus more on my business. The motivation is there. It's just a whole just feeds off each other. Love it. Obviously one of our three vital behaviors is to be approved the products work, not just initially when you do the transformation become, but it becomes this lifestyle. So great counsel there. Um, second one is what's your favorite personal development book, program, podcast? Yeah. Uh, I have read a million books and there are so many, but, um, when I feel like one that everybody's read, so this is so basic, but you're a badass. I love that book and I cannot think of the author off the top of my head. Um, but I loved it. I like blew through that book and then went and bought like 20 copies to give to anybody who went Emerald because it's just so good. You're a badass. And that's by Jen Sincero. Thank you, Jenna yeah. Chopson that just shared Jen Sincero. You're a badass. Really good book. Um, and the last question is, um, what do you think separates successful coaches from those that fail, uh, give up, or never get started? So this one I did write down because I had a little preparation with that. But um, I, it was perfect timing because I did that questionnaire today, and then a lot of the coaches I was talking to are ones who are feeling like the giving up, that, that feeling. So um, I, I wrote down that not doing the little things is – is such a, I mean, you can't not do the little things and expect the, the big success. And um, it's like all these little steps that we take throughout our business that seems so silly and so little, like adding three people a day to your network or whatever it is. But um, all those things are the building blocks that really give you the great thing at the end. And um, I really try to get coaches to see that in the beginning, um, not being consistent, you know, the ones who are not seeing success are usually not consistent. Um, what was the other one? Not stopping when there's a bump or a setback. Uh, you know, someone hears no and all of a sudden they're like, oh, like they put the brakes on, never talk about it again. I had a coach who said, 
well, one of my posts came off wrong to a friend back when it was snowing. Okay. And so like now it's fall again. And she was like, and I never, I haven't talked about coaching opportunity since publicly. And I'm like, what? It's been eight months. What is happening? So, you know, that, and then just not being afraid of failure, um, which kind of ties in with that is like every successful coach has seen multiple failures, you know, all the time. Wow. This is really good. And, and the part that, you know, that you guys might have caught from the beginning is Nikki wasn't this, you know, person that's outgoing for a lot of time. And you've said this publicly, Nikki, where, you know, you suffered from anxiety sometimes in social, social situations. And so nobody could ever tell that. And it's a result of a lot of work, a lot of consistency on your part and, and a lot of willing to fail. That's really part of the equation and you've done absolutely phenomenal. Congratulations uh, to you. you and your team. Um, thank you for jumping on. Really yeah, appreciate yeah. it. So, I was so excited to be here. Thank you guys for getting on. Absolutely. And if these Top Coach Academy with Nikki Whiting uh, gave you some value, please share it, subscribe. Make sure that you jump on into these Top Coach Academies. They'll happen every other week. Um, we, wanna, we wanna make sure that you jump onto her page, let her know how valuable this is. I took a ton of notes myself. Um, certainly look forward to everybody, uh, whether you're watching this live or watching the recording, that you apply these. And um, Nikki, thank you for paying it forward. That's what I love about Beachbody leaders and coaches. Um, you pay it forward and you're sharing with people from across the network. Um, and so we really, really appreciate you. Uh, the next one will be coming up in two weeks. And I just got confirmation that we'll have Top 10 coach Anita Myron on that one. So be sure to tune in in a couple of weeks. Come with questions. I'm ready to learn. And until then, here's to your fitness, success, and health. We thank you, Nikki Whiting, and we will see you in a couple of weeks. Bye, guys. Thank Bye -bye. you. Bye-bye.